Hi, Jared. How are you? Good. How you doing? Good, good. Thank you so much for taking some time for us right before the holiday. I, um, my name is Aisha Richardson. I am a member of state committee and of the Black Caucus. And Michael Laws is the the uh, chair of the Black Caucus. He is our webmaster uh, today. And so we're going to take this 15 minutes and we're going to block it off into five minute sections. Um, the first section will ask you about, uh, uh, you know, for you to introduce yourself. The second question that we have is your path to victory during the primary. And the third question has to do with the general election. And would you consider and what's your opinion of the down ballot races running together, similar to how the judicial candidates ran successfully in the last general election? That works. We're not going to be here as long as that America 250 hearing, right? No, we're not going to have a 12 hour marathon. No. Okay, that's good. That's good. So we'll start with the first question. And so just give us a, a, a an overview of, you know, why are you seeking the office of attorney general and tell us a little bit about yourself. Absolutely. Thank you so much to the Black Caucus for hosting me. I want to be your next attorney general because I want to be bring safe, thriving communities with opportunities for all Pennsylvanians in each of our 67 counties. This is because this is where my passion is. This is the work that I'm already doing in Northeast Philadelphia. The neighborhood that raised me, raised by a single mom, public school teacher in Northeast Philadelphia. My wife and I live three blocks away from where I was raised uh, with our new daughter, Charlotte. And what I've been working on in the Northeast is changing the narrative of our neighborhood by investing. Investing in the form of rebuilding rec centers, bringing placemaking, transformational anchor properties back to our business corridors, getting our business corridors working again, literally lighting up, lighting up the neighborhood with new lighting, bringing the police and youth together in a dynamic partnership to, to begin to build trust in the community amongst the new generation. Trying to bring hope and change in the neighborhood by taking blighted parcels and turning them into new community parks. All of these efforts have led to a reduction in crime and increase in opportunity. I believe that same model will work in all 67 counties in urban, suburban, and rural communities alike. But I'm also going to take on the big fights. I'm going to take on to make sure that our voting rights protect are protected, that our reproductive rights are protected. And this is why 20 of my colleagues, the most progressive military PAC in the nation, Vote Bets, has endorsed my campaign. But I'm also going to take on fights that all of you have brought up to me as issues that are important. You've talked to me about the issue of trust in the African-American community amongst our law enforcement. This is something I've tackled head on in the Northeast, where we've brought police and community together. I think presence is really important here. When there's a shooting in my district, I go out with local police, community relations officer, and I just say that I want to hear how people are feeling, how we can rebuild and rework our community. We bring in community partners, mental health providers, folks that can just listen and learn and then surround people with social services at that moment when people are feeling frustrated and anxious that they need. But beyond, in, beyond simple, simply being present, I think what is required also is a rebuilding of that relationship. And that is making sure that youth and police are brought together in partnership. But it's also embedding police in the community in which they live, that police speak the, have, have language proficiency, look like the people that they represent, 
This is critical and we need to do more of it. What I see in my neighborhood in the most diverse community in the whole city is that people don't talk about wanting less police, but they do want a different type of policing. And that's what we're trying to do. We talk a lot about community policing. We don't do it. We need to make sure that people are embedded in community, that they know faith-based leaders, nonprofits, um, civic leaders, and the like. So that that trust is built up. That takes hard work. As an attorney general, I have an outsized impact to make sure that we get the training right for our local DAs our, um, and our police, our law enforcement community. Another issue that brought up and a fight I'm interested in is housing. This is one I deal with every, every day by standing up to wayward landlords who live in New York, New Jersey, and Maryland and don't take care of our properties here in Pennsylvania. I wanna hold them to account. Their predatory rent to own schemes, their illegal evictions, their illegal fees, redlining in our communities. We need to have an attorney general who knows how to do this work, knows how to fight pushback. And this will begin with an education campaign in my office to make sure that law enforcement DAs, local community leaders understand the importance of tenants' rights. I'm Jared Solomon. I'll take on the big fights and I'll do the investment we need to make our communities in Pennsylvania thrive and make sure we bring safety to all 67 counties. So you talked a little bit about law and order, and I wanted to ask you a question about um, our current vice president having served as a, an attorney general and sort of holding incongruent ideas in her head around um, punishment, crime, and, 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 and holding people accountable, but also criminal justice reform. Can you talk a little bit about those two, two issues? We can do both at the same time. We can make sure that if people have broken that social contract. There are people, like I said, I represent the most diverse community in, in the Commonwealth. And there are people that are coming into our neighborhood. They have ghost guns. They are um, really preying on vulnerable individuals in our neighborhood. And everyone believes that they're to, to fray at that social fabric is something that we need to push back on, that we do need efficient and effective prosecution of gun-related crimes. But at the same time, our justice system has to always be tempered with a healthy dose of mercy. Mercy must pervade everything that we do. And as Attorney General, that is what, what I will do to make sure that um, we are doing the necessary investment in training, the sensitivity, sensitivity training for our law enforcement officers, to make sure that DAs are not abusing their prosecutorial discretion. That's the training that I will do place front and center in my administration. It's not gonna be on the sidelines, it's gonna be what I lead with. And I think also key to that, the third point is, we need to make sure that wayward cops are held accountable. This is very important. And it's, I think, a, a specific component, important component of criminal justice reform. And I've taken on those fights that have put me in a position where I needed to take on vested special interests. And when there is, an, uh, when there are officers who are not, who are not abiding by the oath that they took to defend our communities, we need an attorney general who's going to make sure that they're held accountable. So that leads us into your road to victory, um, no. this crowded field. And if you could talk to us a little bit about what your road to victory is in the primary. Sure. So if you think about the field, you've got no, uh, and this, this upcoming primary, no presidential race, really. There's no Senate primary. So you're talking about attorney general, auditor, treasurer. If you look at prior elections, probably 18 to 20% turnout, anemic turnout on the Democratic side. 
uh, 650, 700,000 voters, the majority of which will be driven by turnout in voting rich areas in southeastern Pennsylvania. And of those voters, it's going to be an older election. Uh, the majority of folks, almost 50 percent, are going to be 60 and older. This is not a turnout election. So what I know in my path is I need to be have the resources to get my experience and vision out. And my experience and vision at, as um, a, a differential from other candidates is one driven by investing in a turnaround story in my neighborhood and also the political courage that I've demonstrated to take on the big fights. I will have the resources to fight in this primary to make sure that I get that message out. I would say also in the general election, as a general election candidate, my stands against corruption, against special interests, against political power brokers, political elites, for independents and moderate Republicans in a general election, we will be able to win those folks over with my message. Excellent, excellent. So the final question is about the, um, uh, an unofficial coordinated campaign with the down ballot um, uh, races. We we don't have the straight ballot voting anymore because we've got the mail-in ballots now. And so in our last election, um, we we were really successful Democrats with getting our judicial candidates cre uh, to the top of the to the you know winning, and also our our color count counties you know those counties that are uh, you know outside of the philadelphia area and so and and allegheny county as well you know we 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 we, we were successful with sarah and amarado so so tell us a little bit about whether you feel that that would be an asset to the 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 up ballot as well because there's some voter apathy you know or voter uh, unenthusiasm about the biden ticket yes <laughs> yes uh Look, the things we do best as Democrats are the things we do together. I have been part of campaigns where there's not a coordinated effort and those simply don't work. When we're coordinated as Democrats with our values, our messaging, our vision, up and down the ballot, we win. When we bring pool resources for mail, for TV, when we co-locate office space to reduce costs, where we share staff, where we share a field program and a press team. That's how we win as Democrats, because it's not just that we're co-locating people up and down the ballot in the same space, state rep, state senator, AG, treasurer, auditor, but it's also those ideas are flowing. The volunteers from the auditor's campaign or part of the attorney general's campaign. And now they're part of a field program for the state reps and the state Senate candidates in the area. Coordination and collaboration at all levels, up and down the ballot as Democrats is a winning strategy. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I, I think that it's proven effort um, that these last um, you know, since since uh, since since you know, right after 2016, there was a re a shifting of the way that we do our campaigns, and so we've 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 seen results as you know as we we've changed the way we do um, we communicate with the electorate. Um, we recognize that there's a younger electorate. We need to make sure that we're bringing out young people as well as making sure that we're, you know, focusing in on our on our baby boomers as well. So it's just really exciting to talk to somebody who understands all those things. I, I couldn't agree, agree more. I mean, the, the, I think it's also it's driven by our shared values. If we agree that suppressing the vote. And pushing back against those efforts holding election deniers accountable is a winning democratic argument. Everything should flow from that. Key, critical to that, is the resources that are going to drive that argument in every single community. And if we're not doing that, I think we're only hurting our cause as Democrats. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I mean, I think the things that 
Um, you know, so often politics is driven by a personality, but yeah. this time they were, it's been driven by our, our shared values, um, voting rights, um, women's reproductive rights, and, and not having a, uh, a someone at the, not having folks who support insurrection, right? So if we can then articulate those things, then we can move forward an agenda that's, that's, a, a, that's, a, that's an America for all. That, that's exactly right. We, we need to be united when there are all of these existential threats to our key institutions that are protect our foundational fundamental values, and we can only do that united. Yes, I, I, I agree. I, for, I want to thank you so much. And, uh, you know, I mean, this is the right before the holiday. You got a, you got a, you know, you got a, a little girl who's now going to recognize Christmas and, and, you know, get excited. And so I'm, I just want to thank you so much for taking the time to talk to the members of the Black Caucus. We're going to be doing this again. This is not, this is just the first, but, you know, we, we want to make sure that we're communicating with our candidates and that we are putting the word out to the folks who are our super voters um, about what the issues are and who, who's running. So I want to say thank you so much and you stay well and be safe. Thank you. It means a lot that you hosted this forum. I'm thrilled to do it. Uh, your, your, your voice is so critical and you're talking to the people that you were elected to serve and represent. So to have this back and forth with your voters means so much. Thank you. Have a great evening. Bye-bye. Take care, guys. Merry Christmas.